Suspense. And the producer of radio's outstanding theater of thrills, the master of mystery and adventure, William N. Robeson. We beg the indulgence of the aficionados of bloodshed. We pray patience of the connoisseurs of carnage, the hoarders of horror, and those who treasure terror. Tonight we murder no one. Tonight our heroine enjoys every moment of the predicament in which we place her. Tonight, we let the light of laughter into the dark corridors of suspense with one of the zaniest comedians of our time, Marie Wilson. Listen, listen then to Miss Wilson in Star Over Hong Kong, which begins in just a moment. Here's actress Joan Bennett. It's terrible to try to act with a dreadful cold. To feel better quickly, I take four-way cold tablets, the fast way to relieve nasty cold distress. Yes, tests of four leading cold tablets proved four-way fastest acting of all. Amazing four-way starts in minutes to relieve aches, pains, headache, reduce fever, calm, upset stomach, also overcomes irregularity. When you catch cold, try my way. Take four-way cold tablets, the fast way to relieve cold distress. Four-way, 29 and 59 cents. Here's a word about another fine product of Grove Laboratories. Does dandruff dull your hair, leave scalp itchy? Get Fitch Dandruff Remover Shampoo and get rid of unsightly dandruff in three minutes. Three minutes with Fitch regularly is guaranteed to keep embarrassing dandruff away forever. Apply Fitch before wetting hair. Rub in one minute. Add water. Lather one minute. Rinse one minute. Every trace of dandruff goes down the drain. Three minutes with Fitch. Unsightly dandruff's gone. Fitch can also leave your hair up to 35% brighter. Fitch Dandruff Remover Shampoo. And now, Star Over Hong Kong, starring Miss Marie Wilson. A tale well calculated to keep you in suspense. One has to be on one's toes in Hong Kong. Touchy duty, one crisis after another. Had one recently nearly undid us. Movie star from America. Very beautiful girl. Too beautiful. Yes. Uh, but permit me, uh, Randolph Hardison Smythe here, yeah, press attaché to the governor of Hong Kong. You probably never heard of the incident, managed to hush it up at the time, but now it can safely be told, and should, I believe, as a warning to the free world. It began at the Hong Kong airport. I was there to welcome a rather important member of Her Majesty's loyal opposition, who was on a fact-finding junket to the more distant outposts of our one-time empire. However, the first passenger off the plane was not the member from Upper Cotswold, but a little man in one of those dreadful Hawaiian shirts. As soon as he saw the group of native reporters okay, who had accompanied boy, me, he started giving orders. Ready. She'll be out in just a minute. First shot at the top of that ramp, then a couple coming down, then she'll be glad to pose for any individual shots. Now, which one of you guys is Hyberson Smith? It's Harbison Smythe, and I am he. Glad to meet you, Smitty. I'm Joey Finn, Mid-Century Mama Studios. Now, i got to hand it to you, Smitty. Our own people didn't... I must confess that I haven't the foggiest notion what he was talking about, and I couldn't have cared less. Okay, honey, action. Camera. And then... She appeared at the door of the plane, her arm raised in greeting, her hair framing her face in gold, her smile flashing, her tight dress enhancing that with which nature had already been over generous. And I remembered a cable I had received two days ago alerting me to the arrival of Celestine Mayhew of the American cinema. I had disregarded it since it is not usually my policy to greet theatrical people, but I must say my first glimpse of Miss Mayhew convinced me that the policy would have to be revised. All right, boys. Got everything you need? Fine. Well, Smitty, what is the program? You got the program? Uh, what you got laid on? Press conference, reception by the governor? We're in your hands. Well, suppose we begin with first things first. Yeah, like what? Meeting Miss Mayhew. Oh, sure. Hey, sweetie, come over here. I want you to shake hands with Smitty here. Mr. Hyberson Smith, press attaché to the governor. That's press agent, sweetie. Oh, how heavenly, Mr. Smith. Oh, I'm charmed, Miss Mayhew. And, and it's uh, Smythe, not Smith. Cute. I just adore Englishmen, Mr. Smythe. They're so heavenly. And it's not true at all that they're cold, is it? Uh, oh, dear, no. No, no, not at all. Uh, <laughs> Uh, uh, um, uh, I, I dare say you'd like to meet the press. Oh, yes, I just love reporters. Uh, 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 gentlemen, I give you Miss Celestine Mayhew of the American cinema. That's oh, mid-century oh, oh, studio, oh, boy. Oh, my boys, I think it's so heavenly of you to meet me. I just love Hong Kong. It's just heavenly. 
I do believe it's my favorite city in the whole wide world. I can't wait to try some real chop suey. The way you prepare it in Hong Kong. Sim Kong ye la bo song ta kong bo wa le chop suey. Oh, ho le yin ye shi ka ro. I'm sorry, would you repeat that question, please? It's no question. Chop suey no belong Hong Kong. Chop suey belong in Chicago. No Chinese make it chop suey. Chop suey for American. Of course it is, and we love it. We are so grateful to China for it. It's so heavenly. <laughs> okay, honey, leave them while they're laughing. Uh, okay, Joey. And uh, now, are there any further questions? Hong Kong is blessed to give humble thanks to Lady Point of View. Oh, How oh, heavenly! Is it just heavenly, Joe? Yeah, yeah. Well, Smitty, these airport arrival shots uh, will do for a starter, but they're pretty squares, Bill. Uh, squares, Bill? Yeah, we want to get some leg art with local color, like Celestine sitting in the lap of one of them Buddhas. Oh, what a heavenly idea, Joey! Sheer genius. I'm, I'm afraid the Chinese might take rather a dim view. Of... Oh, and another thing. Do you know whether the uh, Sultan of Tekong Jima is in town? The what? Uh, Celestine's very big in Tekong Jima. The Sultan's her number one fan. Oh yes, I'm very large with the Sultan. He's got a print of every one of my movies, and he runs them over and over. Isn't that heavenly? He writes to me all the time, and I send him all of my pinup pictures. I see. Uh, uh, did he ever send you his picture? No. No, no wonder. He's as wide as he is high. More than three hundred pounds, and only five feet four. Oh, cute! With his dimensions and Celestine's, what coverage? Why, a shot of them shaking hands would push everything off the front page. Uh, when can you set it up, Smitty? Uh, uh, Mister Finn. Tekong Jima is an island nearly a thousand miles south of here, and the Sultan is its absolute monarch. Uh, with all due respect to Miss Mayhew, I doubt if he would come running up here for a publicity picture. Well, it didn't hurt to print some Monaco, any. And whatever Grace Kelly's got, Celestine's got more of it, right? Oh, Joey, you say the nicest thing. Wait a minute. I got a better idea. Look, that limey battleship out in the harbor. We'll shoot a layout of Celestine with all them sailors. Oh, I just adore sailors. They're so yard, yummy, and clean cut. You know, hands across the sea stuff. English-speaking cousins get together jazz. You know? Uh, no, I don't know. I, I don't think the Royal Navy. Well, might... Sell it, chum. Sell it. All you got to do is point out the publicity value. With Celestine Mayhew in the picture, I can get the British Navy on the cover of Life. What I love about you, Joey, is you think big. Got to, honey, or you wind up in nowhere's bill.、Uh, uh, Mr. Finn, it is my duty to warn you that such a course of action might have most embarrassing consequences. You mean no can do? <laughs> well, yes, I suppose that's what I mean. America's traffic accident rate is tragically high and unnecessarily so. What makes the problem so difficult to deal with are emotions, which so many people bring into play when they sit behind the wheel. Scientific studies show that most of our accidents are caused when drivers give way to childish impulses. The driver who insists on going when the traffic light says stop is behaving like a spoiled child. So is the fellow who thinks he's too important to obey the legal speed limit. So is the woman who forgets to signal other drivers when she's making a turn. To be inconsiderate of others on the highway, however, is more than mere bad manners. It's tempting fate. When you get behind the wheel of your car, remember that you're an adult. Drive with patience. Drive with courtesy. Drive with care. Safety-conscious drivers get where they're going just as fast as reckless drivers do, and more important, they arrive alive. If you plan to live to a ripe old age, act your age wherever you drive. And now, starring Miss Marie Wilson, Act Two of Star Over Hong Kong. <laughs> The rest of the afternoon was taken up with the dreary task of welcoming the MP from Upper Cotswold, but I must say my heart was not in it. And as soon as I could, I broke away from the governor's reception and hurried to Miss Mayhew's hotel to see if I could be of any further service to her. I was surprised and deeply concerned to find the poor girl in tears. Oh, oh Mr. Smythe, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? Why, whatever is the matter, Miss Mayhew? It's Joey. He's in jail. In jail? What for? I don't know. Well, I mean, one isn't incarcerated for nothing. What? What did he do? Nothing. We 
we just went for a boat ride. A boat ride? Yes. Joy hired one of these cute little Chinese boats, and he told the man to take us out to that big battleship in the harbor. Oh. Only they wouldn't let us on the boat. Naturally. And while Joy was arguing with the sailor at the gangplank, a lot of other sailors started crowding along the deck rail. Naturally. They waved at me and whistled. Oh, they were so cute. So I waved back. Naturally. And Joy took some pictures of me waving at them and them waving at me. And that's when they arrested him. Oh, Mr. Smart, what am I going to do? Here I am, all alone in Hong Kong. Oh, you're, you're, you're not alone, my dear Miss May, you know. I'm here. I don't know what I'd do if you weren't, Mr. Smart. Uh, uh, why, why, why don't you call me Randolph? <laughs> Cute. Randolph. <laughs> Thank you, Celestine. My close friends call me Silly. Silly? <laughs> it is, isn't it? But it's short for Celestine. Oh, Sally. That's right, Randy. Yes. Well, uh, 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 we must try to get Mr. Finn out of jail. Oh, yes, poor Joey. He's simply got to be back here by 7 o'clock. Well, I, I'm not sure that I can have him released that soon. But who's going to take me to the party? What party? The man who owns all the big movie theaters here in Hong Kong, he's giving a dinner in my honor. I, I just can't go alone. No, of course you can't. And, uh, 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 yeah, I have it. Who are? An idea. Now, if I'm unable to procure Mr. Finn's release by 7 o'clock, would you permit me to escort you? Oh, Randy, I was hoping you'd say that. It'll be just heavenly. <laughs> My heart wasn't really in getting Mr. Finn released, but I went through the motions, confident that the port security officer would be reluctant to let him go. He was. My rights, Mr. Smythe. I should hold you responsible for this mess. Me, Captain? What? Oh, you're the press attaché. These types are your responsibility. However, he's ours now. Well, what are you holding him for? Violation? Official Secrets Act? Oh, now, come on, Captain. Whatever else he may be, this Finn chap isn't a spy. The law is very explicit. The foredeck of HMS Lionheart is classified. Guided missile installation, all that sort of thing. And he was caught in the act of photographing it. <laughs> no, no, he was photographing Sally. I mean, Miss Mayhew with the, with the sailors in the background. Uh, okay. And the guided missiles. Uh, a pure coincidence. Quite. Well, well, I'd like to make arrangements for his release. Negative. This is a matter for the Admiralty. It may take months. But, um, what about Miss Mayhew? I am afraid, Mr. Smythe, that Miss Mayhew is your problem. Bitter? Yes, isn't it? Oh, well, I've done what I could. Perhaps I could do more tomorrow. But right now I was late for my engagement with the Celestial Celestine. And I hurried home to change. I was just putting the last stud in my dress shirt when the phone rang. Mm -hmm. uh, Harbison smile here. Hello! Oh, hello, Sally. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm just leaving. Well, don't pick me up at the hotel, because I'm not there. Uh, oh? No. You see, this charming Chinese gentleman called for me, and he just wouldn't take no for an answer. He said they were all waiting for me and everything. And, and since you are just a wee bit late, I knew you wouldn't mind my, my running on ahead. Uh, well, perhaps you just as soon I didn't come at all. Well, of course not, silly boy. It's just a heavenly party. Oh, man. Isn't that heavenly? And they're all smoking divine little pipes. What? Oh, good heavens, Celestine. Don't you smoke any of that. Oh, don't worry, Randy. I wouldn't think of smoking a pipe. It's so unladylike. Uh, 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 Celestine, this is a man who called for you. What was his name? It was a cute name. A funny but cute. Something like Wong Fat. Uh, Celestine? Celestine? <laughs> it's rather a poor show. I rushed to the home of the theater owner. There was a party there, all right. The guests were chatting and sipping cocktails, and the air was filled with the fragrance of women's perfume without a trace of the smell of opium. There was only one thing wrong. The guest of honor, Celestine May, who had not yet arrived, and I had a terrible suspicion that she never would. 
When acid indigestion slows you down, get relief quickly, safely, effectively. Settle the upset fast with a modern antacid that goes everywhere with you. Who do you know about the little white tablet in the little green pocket roll? Just a waiting for the moment when you need them to bring your acid indigestion under control. Tums are the little white tablets in the little green pocket roll. Chums for the tummy, T-U-M-S, bring relief quicker than you'd ever guess. Best for any kind of acid distress, keep them handy in the pocket roll. Keep your tummy under Tums control. No acid rebound with modern Tums. Get Tums, 10 cents. Three roll pack a quarter or the new Tums six roll pack with free metal carrier, 49 cents. And now, starring Miss Marie Wilson, Act Three of Star Over Hong Kong. I drove at once to the port security office, but the captain wasn't there. Nor was he at home or at his club. Well, at last I located him by phone at the home of the theater owner, where he had gone, presumably, to investigate Celestine Mayhew at close hand. Won't your business wait until morning, Mr. Smythe? No, I don't think so. Captain, you've got a kidnapping on your hands. It's a common crime in the Orient. Not when the victim is Celestine Mayhew. Oh, nonsense. She's due here any minute. But she'll never arrive. She was lured from her hotel by a man named Wong Fat something or other. Now, does the name mean anything to you? Well, I have to consult my files. Well, just off the top of your head, do you know any Wong Fats? I seem to remember a Wong Fat Lee. Uh, we executed him for murder a few months past. Uh, that's the wrong Wong. Then there's Wong Fat Chung. You must know him. He's a charming chap. He's pastor of the Victoria Presbyterian Church. Sounds like an unlikely suspect. Oh, she said it was a cute name just before the line was cut. Cute name? Would Miss Mayhew consider Wong Fat Toy a cute name? She might. What about him? Slippery customer. We've been watching for him for some time. We've never been able to take him into custody. But why is he under surveillance? Oh, he's in the export business, but we have reason to believe that his real occupation is smuggling. He does a lot of trading with the islands down toward Borneo, Celebes. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Including the island of Tekongjima? Yes, yes. I believe he claims to be a sort of personal representative of the Sultan of Tekongjima. That's our man. Where, 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 where can we find him? Oh, he lives uh, over his go-down on the dock near Queen's Pier. Well, well, let's get cracking and I'll meet you there. All right, old boy. <laughs> I got to the dock first. The place was deserted, but at the end of the pier was a big junk, and on its foredeck was a pile of luggage that I had seen before that day. Celestine Mayhew's luggage. Now, the stand line had already been slipped, and the coolie was casting off the bar line. I leapt onto the after deck, and an instant later, a huge Chinese leapt onto me. Yes, the rest was silence for a while. When I came to, the first thing I saw was the port captain slapping handcuffs on the last of the sailors. And the next thing I saw was Celestine Mayhew, and she appeared to be quite upset. I really think you owe me an explanation, Randolph. Mr. Wong has just been heavenly to me all evening, and he was just about to take me for a moonlight boat ride when you had to go and spoil everything. That, that would have been quite a boat ride, Celestine. What do you mean? Well, no doubt you've been too busy to notice the cargo on the forward deck. What are you talking about? Your luggage. Well, my guess is that your moonlight boat ride was a trip to Tekongjima. Who must not live? Well, why did you go and stop it? It sounds like a heavenly trip. One way. Did the Sultan ever mention his wives when he wrote to you? Why? Yes, wives. Thirty-four of them. Last time they were counted. And I'll wager quite a few of them were provided this way by Mr. Wong. Well, Wong, do you wish to make a statement now, or must we force one from you later? It is as the brash one says. Sultan Tekgongjima, good friend a long time. He now like 34 wives. He only want this lady. Soon Sultan have a birthday. I bring him lady for birthday present. Isn't that a charming thought? Me a birthday present for a sultan. Well, really, it's just... It's just... Heavenly? <laughs> well, we 
we managed to get Celestine checked back into her hotel in as good condition as she left it, and I bade her good night, uh, promising to meet her for lunch the next day. But when I arrived, she had checked out again. And no one could or would tell me where she'd gone, so once more I went to the port captain. Now there's nothing to get excited about, Mr. Smythe. Miss Bates was quite all right. I saw her off at dawn myself. Oh, where, 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 where to? Singapore? Oh, heavens, no. We should not want to embarrass another of Her Majesty's possessions. Oh, no. I went to the trouble of laying on a Royal Air Force bomber which will take them non-stop to go on. I felt it better for all concerned that they should return to and remain on American soil. They? Is Mr. Finn with us? Indeed he is. But what about the spy charge you were holding him on? Oh, there are sometimes higher considerations, Mr. Smythe. Such as world peace. I, I don't understand. Now, supposing Wong Fat Toy successfully spirited Miss Mayhew to the Sultan of Tekkonjima, do you think for a moment that the American government would submit to such an indignity? Oh, oh no. The American Seventh Fleet would have become involved and inevitably certain units of the British Navy. And what with the state of the world today, who knows where the affair would have ended? Yes, yes, I see what you mean. I hadn't looked at it quite that way. It's a pity you didn't. I tell you, Smythe, that girl was the fuse that could have ignited the powder keg of Asia. Oh, I dare say. Still, I, I should have liked to have had an evening of her company. Oh, well, so would I. Oh, boy, well, so would I. But there are times, in peace, as well as in war, when we must make sacrifices above and beyond the call of duty. Produced and directed by William and Robson. In a moment, the names of the supporting players and a word about next week's story of suspense. Each weeknight over CBS Radio, the men behind two of the most familiar voices in the land, Edward R. Murrow and Lowell Thomas, bring word of the day's important happenings to a listening America. Both Edward R. Murrow and Lowell Thomas have highest personal standards of responsibility of professional ethics as newsmen you'll find that the news takes on added clarity and meaning. You'll be left with a better understanding of the day's news events when you hear Edward R. Murrow and Lowell Thomas each Monday through Friday night over most of these same CBS radio stations. Supporting Marie Wilson in Star Over Hong Kong were Ben Wright, Charlie Lung, Ramsey Hill, and Norm Alden. Listen. Listen again next week when we return with Mr. Herbert Marshall in Wax Works. Another tale well calculated to keep you in... Suspense. Miss Wilson is currently appearing in Ken Murray's Blackouts at the Ritz Theater in Los Angeles. The latest news follows, then... Have Gun Will Travel on CBS Radio.